let's cover this article, DC, uh, from, and this will be the last one of the show. One of the family members in the Pell chat, the uh, flock chat, asked about the Lonzo Ball uh, situation. And I'm going to play a bit of the in uh, interview. I got some of it queued up here. And uh, I want to be able to go over what LeVar Ball said uh, about Lonzo Ball. And of course, we all know who LeVar is, the, the famous baller brand dad that's uh you know he got it popping for ball. all of his sons so i mean with, with that being said but laval ball this is the and we got it on stream screen right now for the, the fail flock is laval ball hopes the pelicans trade his son before deadline says he can't stay in new orleans and of course let's get into this was this was written by christian clark uh the nba trade down the deadline exactly one week away and the Pelicans have a difficult decision to make about the future of their backcourt. Lonzo Ball is in the final season of his rookie deal. New Orleans must decide if it wants to cut bait on, on the improving but inconsistent 23-year-old or hold on to him and enter a restricted free agency. But anyway, what I got, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play. I got Lonzo Ball queued up. And this season, Lonzo has played primarily off the ball. He's averaging 14.2 points a game on 56.4 true, uh, true shooting percentage, both career highs. But Laval said he was dissatisfied with his son's role. Now, I'm going to queue up Lonzo Ball so you guys can hear what he had to say about his son. Here we go. Uh, do, so, do you want uh, Lonzo to stay in New Orleans? Do you think that's a fit him for no! the Pelican? Really? No, no, he can't stay in New Orleans, man. Come on, man. Come on, listen, listen, listen. listen. What's, what's your job? Uh, they got some other jobs, but you're good at talking. But right. what if you came into work and they say, you know what? Even though you talk good, I'm going to make you into the world's greatest janitor. Why the hell are they changing your job and you very good at talking? That's like, hey, Joe, uh, Lonzo's always been a playmaker. Why are you trying to change him into a defensive specialist that stays in the corner and shoot threes? And you're trying to change Zion and Brandon Ingram, who all through their career have never been playmakers. They're scorers. Now you want to put the ball in their hand. They playmakers. Man, come on, man. They went to Duke and they weren't playmakers. So when are you going to get to the league and be like, now you're a playmaker? Go score the ball and do what you do. And guess what? They're going to have a hard time trying to win every game if the playmaker ain't making the right play. Okay, so one week from today is the trade deadline. Do you think by that point Lonzo is going to be traded? Oh, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know what they're going to do. I hope he be traded, though, you know. Because here's the thing. I don't like watching him play like he plays. He'll, he'll, he'll zoom down the court on a few things, man. I'm like, dang. It's just like the last game. How you going to take out my son fourth quarter, start the damn thing with the fourth quarter, let him play eight minutes straight, and the last five minutes you're up by 20, put everybody in there. But don't wait till you're down and say, hey, Lonzo, five minutes left. Come on now. Man, he already had his foot on their throat. When you have 16 assists, the ball is moving in the third quarter. And then at the end of the game, it's so easy to beat them because I already know what's going to happen. Brandon's going to try to take a shot. Zion's going to try to barrel you over. Be ready for the double team, and let's get the ball and run. Uh, saying that he doesn't like how he's, he fits in the Stan Van Gundy system, even though, in my opinion, I think Lonzo's versatile enough to do that. But at, you see what Stan Van said at the end of the game, he wants the ball in Lonzo's hands to distribute and make things happen. And of course, Lavar saying, if you know, in bitten part, that if you want his hand, his hands on the ball in the clutch moments, why not have that facilitating for a large summation of the game? So you know, I mean, and then you know, to be honest with you, who's a better distributor or handle the ball? You got Bledsoe or Lonzo? You know, so I mean, we'll see what's going on. But yeah, Lavar brings some interesting points. Which let, let's talk about that. What you think about that? I think he, I think he's uh fifty percent right, um a hundred percent right as a father because if I see my son play a certain weight his whole life and I know his potential and what he's capable of, then obviously yeah I don't I don't want him to be a, a three and D guy and all of this, but understanding that Lazo's gonna have to be the third guy on this team, which I think fits should fit perfectly because of uh the skill sets of bi and zion bi is is probably our second most versatile guy behind lonzo ball and um i think he could easily adapt to a scoring role where he doesn't have the ball in his hands in my opinion that's when bi is most effective 
and probably plays his best when he's not on the ball as much as we have him in the game like tonight, um, which he wasn't on the ball a lot, but you get my point. Uh, Zion, Zion is also very adaptable and versatile offensively, especially. And um, when Lonzo kind of operates and runs the offense, things seem to run smoother a lot of times. They get better looks. You know, uh, it's it's a more um, ball-friendly mentality with the team. Uh, the guys actually, you know, sometimes Lazo has a, an infectious thing where we we had periods where we were overpassing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We were we were passing up good shots to get a, a better shot, and I'm like, wow, look at this. And then we have other times where you know guys are wide open and being double teamed, and they don't see the wide open guy. They don't pass or pass to another guy that. It's in a similar situation. So, um, Zion and B.I. are still learning to be able to be the most effective facilitators. I think it comes naturally to Zion. B.I. has some of it, but out of the three, he's probably the one, to me, that makes some questionable decisions sometimes. Okay, question question for you. What is Smoke? Uh, do you think they could be fired up? Could we uh, seriously be looking to trade Lonzo Ball, or should we? Could his dad be saying maybe it was on his mind and he don't want to tell everybody else because he's such a nice guy? Yeah, he's already quoted he being Lonzo saying, I love playing with those guys and I'm also really cool with them off the floor as well. Uh, He told him he told reporters when talking about playing alongside of Williamson and Ingram, we're all young. I think we can do some big things, especially in the future coming up. Now, of course, he's. At, in this season, averaging 14.2 points a game, five and a half assists per contest, four rebounds, 1.3 on the steals per game. The most notable improvement has come beyond arc as he's shooting roughly 39% from deep and 37.5% of his triples last season. So he's he's doing a good job there. And the fourth year, the 1.5% from three-point range in two seasons with the Lakers. So you can see the obvious change in Lonzo's game, man is that he's definitely got better shooting it. And of course, he's set to hit the restricted free agency market, which means teams can offer him uh, a deal and the Pelicans can choose to ma- match it, which pretty much means that they're going to let the market dictate uh, Lonzo's value with the team. So uh, my, my take on it is Lon- LaVar doesn't like to see him at off guard. I think he's versatile enough to play both. But I, as far as the trade rumors are concerned, I don't think the Pelicans trade La- uh, uh, Lonzo Ball. Out.